so great to have you on a moment with Modern Mentors. So excited to talk to you. I'm excited that you actually want to talk to me about some things. <laughs> <laughs> we're both excited. Um, we are. So this season we're talking about behind the scenes and what it takes to be a leader and what that experience and that you've had over the course of your life, your career, how that's really contributed to who you are today. And I think it's absolutely perfect because we've been working together with um, Transform You for a few months now and have gotten to know you and understand that you've got a massive story behind you. So t- tell me tell me all about you and where you've come from and what you're doing now. Look, I think all of us as human beings have a story. And for me personally, I think that we all as human beings have to find what our purpose is and live in our purpose so we can help one another. That's really how I feel as a human being. And for me, um, I'm a psychic medium. I started seeing and feeling and connecting with the other side from when I was a very young girl, actually, but I blocked it out when I was probably, I hit around maybe 12 years of age. And I always felt like there was something more that I had to give the world, but I just didn't know what that was. And I would always have these type of imagery uh, stories that I would see and I would think that was just my imagination. But as I got older, I quite quietly realized that I was manifesting throughout my life for many, many years. And I also found that being open to intuition and awareness as a human being and kind of trying to remove the conditioning that we all go through throughout our lives, through our parents or through schooling or through the news or or through just social um, reasonings of the person that we're, we should be rather than the person that we're meant to be. So for many years after the block came for me where I stopped seeing and I feel like that really happened when I started going into my teenage years and entering into high school and entering into listening to all the uh, reasonings behind teachers and, you know, parents of the type of person we all should be, go to school, learn, listen, do everything by what the elders say because we have lived our lives. And for many years I started doing that. And I think we all do that as, as, as young adolescents because that's the way we're taught. And so as time went on, but I, but I always still would manifest it. And I'm, I believe that I um, used to speak things into action. And one of those things was from the age of, and my mum has these cards, from the age of probably six, seven years of age, I used to write at the bottom of every single birthday card that I would give people or a Christmas card, even to my friends, I would always write Love Famous Jackie. <laughs> and we've got all these cards that says Love Famous Jackie. And it wasn't about being famous, look at me, um, you know, I'm recognised. It was more about um, I just did it because I felt like there was some, as a young kid not knowing what that kind of meant, that there was something that I'd be able to give other people as I got older, I I understood it more um, by having some kind of profile. And so I believe I started speaking things into action within my life and not realising that I was actually manifesting it. And so I think I was about 17 um, I started my vision board or maybe 16 and a half, 17. And I remember I was just flicking through magazines and it was like, now I look back at our home moment. And I feel like we all have that throughout our years, but we don't see it as that. We just say, oh yeah, that's just an idea or, an, or a thought. And, um, and so I literally started doing a vision board of all the things that I wanted in my life. And I really felt myself in those pictures. And as I was laying them out of all the things that I wanted, and I really um, didn't think about how it was going to get there. I just knew it was going to get there, just, you know, doing my thing. So fast forward, then I entered into a relationship that was quite toxic and I had completely lost myself emotionally, physically, I'd even say spiritually, um, where the relationship became very controlling and the relationship became very much about what this person wanted and it became very quite isolating, but I didn't see it in the beginning. I felt like it was just that's how relationships are because it was my first relationship. Again, always listened to my family, always did the right thing. So I thought this is how a relationship is meant to look like, even though I didn't see it in my parents. But what I did see in my parents is that they're utterly loyal. And I think sometimes for me, 
I'm a very loyal person. So I was very much like, well, because I'm so loyal that I stick this out, that this is the way a relationship is meant to be. You're still figuring your things out at, you know, at 19 and 20 and 21, 22, 23. And um, then I soon come to realize that this relationship really is not a good one. And as time went on and I was isolated from my friends, it became a really controlling relationship where he would actually tell me what to wear, who I could hang out with and all those things. And I started listening. So I went from this really quite confident, vivacious woman um, that always knew that there was something more for her. But when I entered into this relationship, it's like everything just dwindled. Like I just forgot about what I wanted. And so that relationship lasted about four and a half, five years. Towards the end, it was a bit on and off. But I remember that I used to get very clear um, vibes within myself or, you know, a strong intuition of, of things that wasn't quite right, but I wouldn't listen to it. Mm. And it was only until one moment I remember I was, and I've talked about this before, and I feel like this is how it got me to where I am today is where I was sitting on my bed and I was crying and I, and I yelled at God, but I'm not religious. What I mean by that is I believe God is all. I believe we're all connected. Everything living is connected. Yeah. But I, I, I was space that is God. And so I said to God, why is this happening to me? And I was laying there crying. And in that moment, I saw a vision of every time this person ever lied to me and how he lied to me and what he had done. And I remember the next day I went to him and I said to him, I know everything you've ever done. I started telling him all the things that I had <laughs> seen. And the first thing he said to me is, what friend of yours told me? <laughs> and it was very much like, he thought somebody had told me, but I, I actually said my angels told me, and he was like, you're cuckoo, you're crazy, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, cut that story short. I ended up, that relationship severed, but I believe there's some kind of post-traumatic stress around that relationship because for a year after that, I didn't want to let go of, of that relationship emotionally. I didn't want to detach myself from that because that's all I had ever known for yeah. five years, this abusive, controlling relationship. And it was almost like I felt like this this relationship ended because the universe made it end. It made me see what this person was doing, but it also made this person not want to um, be with me because I kept questioning all these things. And if I hadn't have questioned, I'm sure I would have probably ended up marrying this person and just, you know, sitting at home cooking, cleaning and being the person he wanted to be rather than what I wanted to be. And so for a good year, I was at my lowest point. I felt like, um, I don't, I don't know if I want to, um, like, I just would cry all the time. I'd be in my bedroom and I wouldn't come out and I'd lost a lot of weight and it was, I become quite depressed. And I didn't even know what depression was because I had never experienced depression. Mm. Um, and even my mum would come knocking on the door to come, come out and eat something and I didn't want to eat. And then it became a situation where something inside me was like, you've got to start reading. So I started reading all about self-development, a, a really why, why it is I attracted this situation. Mm. And as I started reading all these um, inspirational books, like Abraham Hicks, Dr. Joseph Murphy, um, Florence Scovel Shin, The Game of Life, um, Louise Hay, um, I just started reading up all about metaphysics, um, the even scientifically, why our minds do the things that we do how come we create the situations we create and things just started making sense to me it's almost like immediately all the spirituality all the things that i saw when i was younger started flowing back in mm -hmm. including when i saw that spot of um all those moments of what that person had done to me <laughs> and so i went on this really big journey of um coming back and reconnecting to my spirituality and listening and honing into my intuition and it became so strong that i was guided to an angel shop where i'd buy sometimes these books but i'd go everywhere and buy books i go to the library i'd go to um you know different types of stores where they would have these types of um books that i was looking for things that i would be guided to and anyway i ended up at this um shop called angels in the lake and i remember i had um I had literally found a book uh, called Divine Guidance by Doreen Virtue and the book fell out like somebody had pulled it out in front of me. And I thought, oh, okay. And I opened up the book and the book was how to differentiate, I can never say this word, <laughs> differentiate, <laughs> differentiate true guidance to false guidance, right? Yeah. And it was almost like this, I got these goosebumps and I knew that that's what I had to learn. And so the woman at the shop that owned the shop, I, she, I was talking to me about something and I started giving her psychic vibes 
and just randomly and she's like oh my god that everything that you said is true would you come work at my shop as a psyche it's like no i was working in corporate banking and retail banking at the same time i was doing casual um you know work for for retail and also casual work for corporate banking as well i was like no i'm gonna be a psychic like no <laughs> anyway so off i go i was reading more books and i came back down three days later and again i was down there buying more books and the lady says to me again would you be a psychic um, would you be a psychic at the show? And I said, no, uh, no. Left again. And the next time I came back, this is probably a week later, I literally um, said, I gave her some more vibes. And she said to me, will you be a psychic at my shop? And out of my mouth, it wasn't even me. It was like somebody pushed it out of my mouth. I went, yes. And I was already, t- she's, she's already got, I've already got three people that want to see you. So literally the next week, on the day that I had off on a Friday, I started doing readings and I remember sitting there going, what the hell am I like, I, I, what am I doing? But when I sat down and I started giving this woman a reading, all these things were coming out and everything I was saying was absolutely truth. And then from that moment, um, I was booked out for a month. It was, this is only word of mouth. And then six months, then one year, then two years and three years. And it was just like out of this world. And that's what, and then I left my job in banking and this is what I um, lent into, my purpose. I believe that was my purpose. And so that's how my um, psychic awareness really started. And so moving forward, I I felt like that there was always something more that I needed to do. And I had to let go of what I thought I was meant to do by other people and lean into what my purpose was. Mm -hmm. And sometimes the universe will put things and places and situations in front of you to say, wake up. Mm. And I, I, everything that you've just said there is so interesting because it's amazing how you can kind of your body rejects so much opportunity and and then literally life has to keep delivering the same profile or the same opportunity in 10 different ways yeah what what do you think it was about your personality your upbringing your leadership skills like what was it about your person that fun, like you actually listen quite quickly. You know, you you came on board with that fairly quickly. Lots of people kind of don't do that until they're in their forties. Because they're like, oh my gosh, that opportunity was there the whole time. I didn't see it, but you you did see that quite quickly. What do you think it was about you that kind of saw that? I f- I feel not. I think I feel that for me the reason I and I give thanks every day that I was able to see that at a very young age, as in learn from that situation I was in within that relationship. Cause a lot of people take years and years and years and years, and years to do it. I feel it was me constantly saying to the universe behind closed doors, I know there is something bigger and there is something more I need to do. You need to show me and I'll have faith in what you yeah. show me. Mm-hmm. And I remember there was a moment I, it, this just image just came into my head as I'm talking to you. There was a moment I was watching the Grammy Awards. I was about 16 and that moment flashed. And I remember even before I did my readings when I was asking and crying for, you know, that good year. And I saw CC Weiner and Whitney Houston sing a song, Count on <laughs> Me, with a choir band at the back. And I bawled my eyes out and I said to my mum, that's why I want to be famous. It wasn't the actual fact of look at me. It was the fact that I got goosebumps and I cried yeah. from the effect of what these two people were doing. They were singing and they were saying, count on me and have faith. And it was like, it was like, I'm even getting teary now thinking about it. It was like a moment for me. It was like, that was what I felt in my heart that I want to be recognized to be able to help people or, um, or be able to give people those feelings that these people were giving me and these humans were giving me this feeling through energy and they were affecting me in such a in a such a positive way and so i feel like the reason i listened so quickly to my intuition it was almost like it snowboarded because i said okay i'm open i'm open and receptive and so many people don't want to be open and receptive because what I've seen over the years of doing readings now, when I really look back, is that they don't want to take accountability for what's not working. And it's easy to stay in a situation and take a look at what, what's not working within one's relationship. And people, a lot of people are scared of change, unfortunately, because of conditioning. Mm. Yeah, I think you, you kind of tapped into something really interesting. And it's something that I hear a lot at the moment is this kind of like good girl conditioning where 
you know, you've you've been brought up through, you know, your family, not with no malintention, but there's <clears throat> to be a good girl or a good person, try and do the right thing according to someone else. You have stepped into not only your intuition, but also your own person at, at a young age. And even though you were in a tricky situation relationship-wise where, where your confidence had gone, you'd still managed to find that inner leader within you, that person that was kind of, that knew her mind. Is that something that you, you you kind of had in you the whole time or is that something you trained or did you your parents give you that kind of strength? What, what's Where did that I, come from? I actually believe when you talk about leadership, right, I believe we're, like I said in the beginning, we're all born with a gift and purpose. And whatever that gift is, you've got to find it, you've got to harness it, and you've got to use it and you have to help others. And for me, I believe that your gifts play important roles within your life and people that come into your life including your parents so for me i believe my dad being european and coming to a country by himself at 15 with no money no money not even a dollar and having that that um strength and that i'm leaving everything that i know i can't speak a word of english imagine that at 15 you're going by yourself going to another country and you just have this kind of ticker in you where i'm going to do do that right so obviously i've got a bit of that genetic coming in there mm -hmm. then i've got my mother who's um i'm like my dad loud out there and mum's quite um she's really soft and um doesn't argue <laughs> not that i argue i mean sometimes i do but <laughs> she's um just very well balanced and, and I feel, but my mom, her resilience and her strength is very quiet, but it's very endearing and it's very, um, it's very inspiring too. She's been through a lot. She's Serbian. She came out to this country when she was um, seven. So there's a lot of things that she's experienced too. So I think bringing all those elements into my makeup of who I am, but also when I look at the way I was raised, even though I lived in Australia, and I'm Australian, but I was born in Croatia. I didn't see myself as an Australian because I was very um, raised in ways that my Australian friends were not raised. Like my dad would be outside cooking in a pot and there'd be food all over the table. And whenever my friends would come over, they can come over and they can eat. But I wasn't allowed to go to sleepovers. I wasn't allowed to um, really go to my friend's house. They all had to go to my house. And that's the way I was raised in that situation. But I also believe too that my mum would dream things and her dreams would come true literally the next day. My dreams, when I dream something, it usually comes true within a three-day period. And I know that when a dream, when there is a message in the dream and it's very strong, like, for example, um, if somebody is going to contact me or is not well or um, if something is about to happen, I, I just know that this dream is going to happen. And it usually happens within a three-day period. With my mum, it's within a day. And my dad actually sees the way I see psychically. He never told, he's never literally really talked about it. He has skimmed over it, but my mum has told me that my dad ha has had many, many visions that have literally, and he'd say things to my mum, come true within a day over oh, the yeah. years. So I feel like the makeup of all these, yeah. um, can, um, ex oh, how do I say it? The it's makeup of, who, yes, it yes, it yes, it yes, yes, yes. And yeah. so it's almost like I believe that um, from, what I'm seeing within my dad and my mum, it was almost like, how can I not be able to overcome somewhat some difficult difficulties within my life? It, I, I'm not going to say it's easy because it wasn't easy, but it's almost like um, I would have the maybe the makeup to go. I can get through this, and so I think it's your you're right. Your external um, environment experiences that you have mm. around you that make up who you become as well as what your purpose is within yourself mm. and you were lucky enough to kind of have all of that and listen and harness it you you knew you had the, the kind of inner guidance to do that and I think on top of that and I don't know if this is something you always were but you're an excellent communicator you know you're you have an oh, energy that kind of comes into a room <laughs> people, and you communicate, you, you bring people together. That's just your natural gift. You know, I've seen you in action. I know that that's the way you yeah. are. You people gravitate towards you. You know, you've got so many people that are interested in your life. You've got so many followers on, you know, on your socials and, you know, you've had people following the amazing race and you get this very big yeah. energy. And I feel like it's mostly positive. Like it's, you you seem to be a kind of person that can understand and empathize with everyone's situation and that makes people gravitate to you to you is that something you've always had or is that something you've developed 
I, I think I've always had it, but don't get it twisted. I still have that Croatian passion, man. When I get like, as we're seeing on The Real Housewives of Melbourne, when I get like really passionate about something, I'm like, I can go poof. But I know <laughs> that um, that's only for it. For a, it's only momentary. But I, I feel that um, when it comes to the confidence and the positivity, when I started doing television, because I am a manifester, I said to the universe, I said to God of the universe, I said, if I do a show like this, and I'm now going to literally, so I basically, coming back to doing the psychic medium readings, going from banking to doing this, like I was literally like putting myself in a situation that I didn't know how people were going to react to it. Is she, is she crazy because she's a psychic? Oh my God. Like, but I actually said to God in the universe, you want me to be a psychic medium reader? You need to put me under divine protection in all that I do. I come on television. I want to be put under divine protection. I want people to accept and understand what it is I actually do. And for the bigger part, the majority, I'd say 85 to 95% of people towards me have been very open and receptive and positive about what I do spiritually. And I think that is um, a combination of somewhere deep within their inner soul or their inner um, intuition. It's like this chick you can see comes from Newcastle. She's very humble. She's, um, you know, probably been through a lot of things that I've been through. Um, she's European. She grew up with not a lot, but she had a lot of love. And, and I think that people can see and feel that about me, but also that, oh my God, not only that, but now she, she's going to talk about being a psychic medium and she's got the, and I'm going to say the balls because a lot of people <laughs> didn't want to come out and say things like that, that I know that are psychic medium out of feeling scared about how they're going to be, um, taken but i was like this is my purpose this is what i have to do and the other thing that i also believe mia is that obviously throughout the years i have talked to people from the other side and given messages back to people that are here and i essentially don't remember what i say but the common theme that i have heard over from the clients is that a lot of people's regrets is not living in purpose not doing what they loved out of fear of being judged and I thought to myself, and I've heard this in many um, med meditations, that if you can inspire one person in your life, then you're doing your job. And so for me, doing this and living in my purpose brings me much more happiness than not living in it. And if some people don't agree or don't like what I do, that's on them. But I know I'm coming from a heart of pure intent and of truth. And so... I think that's where it all comes down to um, where the energy that I bring towards me is the energy I give I give out. Mm. And for the most part, it is very, very positive. But I think as you're saying that, you know, like that is that that has the potential to be quite polarizing, you know, for people, that, whether it's yeah. whether it's they don't like that kind of um, upfrontness or they feel intimidated by the fact that they can't be like that themselves. But I don't see, I mean, maybe I'm wrong, but I, I see that you have this way of, even though you've got this very strong personality, you know, you say what's on your mind, you communicate really kind of, you know, forthright about your ideas and opinions. It, it doesn't seem to make a difference. You have this audience <laughs> that kind of comes towards you in general. And obviously that is <clears throat> something that's very special to you, but it's obviously, it, it might, does it ever overwhelm you that you've got this kind of inbound attention because it's something that is just your natural person. So, you know, I actually blame my dad for that. I'm laughing at you, Mia, because you've been around me sometimes where I'm like, bop, 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 and then <laughs> you just laugh because you know my personality. And actually, there's this one person that we had a dinner with many years ago. It's a, friend, a really good friend of ours now, and she works in TV. And she said she had watched the first season of The Real Housewives of Melbourne, and she kind of said, I judged you a little bit because I'd seen a little bit of, of your personality, but you know, also TV can be, um, you know, like you, sometimes you don't know what, yeah, or what the context is, right? And she said, and this is sometimes what I have found with people that come to know me is like, so, there's this thing about you where you don't want to like you, but when you meet you, it's like, oh my God, I can't help but not like you. And I thought I'd be all over Ben, but I'm like sitting here going, this chick's actually like, oh, like now I'm sitting within her. It's not her being, um, look at me it's more about that's just who she is yeah. and it's not coming from a, a place of egotistical or ego it's just coming that's just who she is and it's actually funny and it is endearing and um and yeah so I I, I think that for me on the most part the one thing like you. 
oh yes that's exactly what she said I can't help but like you and she was like and even though there's a part of me that felt like oh I don't think I'm gonna like it so you yeah. know I, I I would say just be true to who you are and if people don't like you for who you are and this took me many years but even though you know it took me the young years to find this out which I'm so grateful for is that I don't care because I do readings for people that pass away every day and I will not live my life for other people because, you know, all the social media and I, and I had this interview, I think it was with Marie Claire, where they asked me about social media and I'm like, listen here, if you could come in and listen to one reading and a person can come through and I can give you all the information that nobody can know, say it's your dad, your grandfather, your auntie, your uncle, your best friend, whoever it is, and they say to you there is only one life stop worrying about what everybody else says i don't give a shit what people say about me really i don't even on social media i might go oh it's a little bit icky but then i go no nah, but like that they don't know me and at the end of the day i don't know how long i'm here for i might be gone tomorrow and i'm not going to be worrying about that energy <laughs> in all your years of kind of you know being you have you needed to or gravitated towards any mentors yourself is there someone that's helped you or guided you i noticed you've got ben gillies written on your t-shirt <laughs> is it your yes husband? it's my it, husband <laughs> yeah definitely um look my mum my mum is my greatest mentor as well as my husband but my spiritual mentor would definitely have to be louise hay I always go back into leaning into um, she was a world class leader and and people can say what they want, but the facts are what she actually talks about is absolutely true. I honestly believe that us as human beings, our thoughts create our experiences. And if you look at your life, I, I a lot of the time when I speak to people after they go, you know, look where my life is now. And I say to them, well, 10 years before that, were you asking for what you have now? And they go, actually, yes. And I go, but you haven't given gratitude for that. And maybe it's become at a stale or a, or a um, you know, stale mate right now because you've forgotten yourself, but you were thinking about those things 10 years prior and you actually manifested that and you created that yourself. So how about we start there and start giving thanks? So for me, mentors don't just come in, even just Louise Hay and my mum and my husband. Mentors sometimes even come in the likes of just everyday people that I'm just talking to. And what people don't really understand is that I can, I'll sit back and observe people and and when I say observe people, observe how they think about life. And sometimes I'll take what that person says and, and think about something that they've said, and that may affect me in a very positive way. So mentors for me can just come in and every, it can even be the person at the hotel reception that will say something like, um, thank you so, like the, like yesterday, even um, when I was um, at the airport and this actually, like I would see this person as is something that she didn't even realize that she did for me where she goes, I watched you on the housewives and she started crying and she said to me and she wanted a photograph and she goes, but I have to say this. She goes, you are helping people. You, you actually have helped me. Mm. And I just looked at, at that person for a minute and I thought you're actually helping me without realizing it because we all have doubts, including me. There's been times I have had doubts about situations. And in that moment, it's like, you got to keep going. This is a reaffirmate, like reaffirming the things that you do there's a reason for it and you are helping people. So that person's mentoring me to keep going without realising it. Yeah, I think that's so interesting, the, the the contact you make. And I was saying this just to someone yesterday. It's I believe it's they're all meant to be. You know, my friend this morning was telling me how his WhatsApp got corrupted and he had to start a brand new WhatsApp and he had to leave his whole WhatsApp with all the messages behind. And he goes, actually, I feel okay about it. I was stressing out and now I'm like, Thank God all that's gone. And I think, you know, absolutely what you're talking about is right. Every interaction becomes yes. kind of a, a way of learning something else about you or someone. But, you know, in that moment at the airport for you, you had this acknowledgement, this gratitude that came back to you and then it just kind of pumps it back and forth. And I think yes. that's something that you talk about a lot in your um, Transform You course that we could, we're going to talk about in a second, but yeah, is, is how you can actually that gratitude and giving back is a big part of your life and it's almost integral to being successful in yourself. Can you tell us a bit about that? Yeah, I, I think uh, for me, I created a course called Transform You and within that course, because I've had so many people over the years when I've given them a psychic medium reading, I'll give them a psychic medium reading and they're, they're left with wanting more, not as in the reading, more for their life. 
how is it I can create a life that you have? You can never create the exact the exact same life as me. Nobody can or you or anybody else. You have to create your own life and you have to live in purpose. And so I decided I had this epiphany to create this course, Transform You, where I can help people on a bigger scale, but also make people take accountability for what's not working in their life so they can make the change to live their best life. And that means transforming yourself from the, from the inside and sometimes even from the outside. And so... For me, doing or creating this Transform You course really takes a deep dive into everything that I've just talked to you about plus more. And that means um, really essentially um, taking a sweep of your life, seeing what's not working and seeing how we can fix, help you fix that by you actually doing the work to make change to become a a better version of yourself. And sometimes you need a mentor or a teacher or somebody to guide you that have experienced those things. And with me, I've experienced everything that I talk about in those modules and give comparisons. For example, I talk about being in a toxic relationship and how I was able to get out of that, where so many people go, I can't get out of this relationship because I don't want to lose the money or, you know, or upheaval the family. But what people aren't realizing by staying in a situation like that, you're actually creating more damage to yourself and to the people around you. Mm. Um, There's a comparison there that I talk about. Um, Manifestation, how I've manifested all the great things that I have in my life today, but how I grew up with absolutely nothing. I grew up in a very modest home where I was bullied for the type of home that I grew up in. It was it was like a one story wood house that my parents couldn't afford to paint the outside of it, but I had so much love. And, you know, even some of my get up, like my shoes and stuff, like I, my parents couldn't afford to buy us brand new shoes every, every month or every six weeks. It just wasn't possible. So when people go, oh, but you know, look at your life now, what people don't understand is I literally had no money in my bank. I literally would give money to people to help them or I would try and help my parents or, you know, I think about ways that I could, um, like if I'd go out to a nightclub and I've talked about this before, you know, and I only had a hundred bucks left, I'd be shouting everybody there at the, um, at the bar. But what people don't understand is I probably had less than you. And Mm. I was able to get out of that mindset. Mm. So that's another comparison that I talk about and how I created the the life that I have. Um, When you think about that generosity piece that is so abundant, like what is it? Why does that, why does that work? You know, you say you're giving away your last hundred bucks. Yeah. What, why does that bring back for you? What, what's the thinking behind? Well, the thing is, I don't literally go, well, I'm going to going to spend my last hundred dollars because I know that I'm going to get the trillion dollars back. I do it out of the purity of my heart. I'm not a, I'm not a, like for me, I want to see people happy. I want to see people healthy. I want to see people successful. But what I have learned is because I've always gave unconditionally without conditions, meaning if I go and do a shout, I'm not going to go now at, at the at the next dinner that I hang out with the person that I bought dinner for and bitch and go, oh my God, it's their turn to shout. If they want to shout, they can. We'll see what happens, but I'm not going to like judge them on that. But I do know this, that what you give out is what you get back it is the law of the universe and as time went on and i realized why things happened so quickly for me is because i realized that i would give effortlessly and with un and unconditionally without conditions not expecting anything back but then i realized that one of the biggest markers of receiving and manifesting quickly is giving back to people that need it more than you yeah so the biggest um idea around manifestation for me and what i've learned is that um you have to have an open heart you have to be giving you have to be generous i'm not telling you to give all your money away that's what i'm saying what i'm saying is if there are ways that you can help people then you do it it doesn't always have to be monetary it can be you know going to help the homeless like however that looks Mm, yeah and do you think that um you know this has been the key to your success that that piece in itself do you think the one of them yeah one i believe the key to being able to attract easily has been that i've always been um open to helping and giving where i can um and even sometimes people might even say at the detriment of you having no money yeah well i have but it was like, and I don't see it as having no money because then I'd look that I'd have a roof over my head with my parents. Um, I had food on the table, just meant that I just couldn't go out that weekend. Maybe I could have lent 50 bucks from my mum and dad and still went out. Like, do you know what I mean? So yeah. it was always, always knew there was what goes around comes around that I will always be looked after. I just always had this inner knowing. And sometimes I try and teach people there, 
I know some billionaires out there that won't help anybody. Mm-hmm. And I'll say, you might have the billions in your bank, but they're not truly happy. Mm-hmm. That's the point. I can, I can put my head on the pillow and be absolutely happy. When I believe that um, money and abundance and all of that is an exchange to help other people you can still have that beautiful life if you want a beautiful life you can attract it but you have to be open to using that abundance that you receive to help other people if you want to keep the flow going and going and going mm, what does success look like to you success looks like what does success look like to me success like I said before, is if you can inspire one person in your life, and I'm just talking about your children and your um, and your husband or your family blood members, if you can inspire somebody outside of that, then you're doing your job. Success is about having love, peace, living in purpose and inspiring other people and helping humanity. Even today, like before I came on this, I started tearing up when I was watching the, the war that's happening right now in mm. Israel. I thought to myself, Okay, I did a little prayer, sent out love and light to to the universe. And I said, really, what is the point of all of that? There is no point to all of that. It's just greed and money and power and control. And when you try and control something for so long, what ends up happening is um, people will end up rebelling. And what will end up happening is there won't be peace within that beautiful country that there once was. And, or, you know, what will end up happening is the people that lived there will, will move out of there and be like, you know, like I've come from a situation that I loved and I, and I um, respected to this thing of what are you gaining from this? Absolute, you know, nothing and bullshit. And I just think that um, when you say what is success, success is peace and harmony, mm. really is. It's, it's harmony, peace and living in purpose and having love around you that's unconditional. And if you think about kind of what, um, you know, you're on your journey and your, the, 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 the hills and the, the flat, the peaks and the troughs, like what has been the, the secret to the success or what do you think the most valuable lessons are in there that you've learned along the way do you think i and i'm still learning it is to really try not to judge people and their story meaning that even though sometimes i get frustrated and i think sometimes i get frustrated because i think can't you just get it but people will get it when they're meant to get it like and what i mean by that is like it's real life is supposed to be easy and people go well well, it is i know people that and this is in my module in transform you i know people that have experienced absolutely traumatic um experiences within their life however that looked but were able to navigate and move from that and forgive and so the biggest thing for me is sometimes I feel like I've just got to know that people get there when they get there. And there's a part of me that wants people to get there now, but that's not their timing, right? And that's the thing that I do know that the universe is all about, divine timing. Mm. When you think it's the right time for you, that doesn't mean that the universe thinks it's the right time for you. And it's like with me and everything I've ever manifested and I'm still manifesting, even with my relationship, I waited four and a half years for that. And there were times I'd be like, for fuck's sake, like, where is this relationship, man? But then I'd have to like stop myself, cancel that thought, clear that thought, put myself back into the meditation and go, okay, I'm letting go of that ego. I cut the cord, off you shine, goodbye. And then I put myself back because I want everything yesterday. So that's the thing that I had to always um, lean into that divine timing is the universe's time and not yours. And that's that's trust, right? That's what you're what you're talking oh, about. Oh yeah, in, in a trust that things will work out the right way. And um, how do you kind of hold on to that? So what you do is it's like, and I, I do mention this in my transform you, um, in one of the modules, letting go and receiving is that it's like posting a letter. When you post a letter, you don't ask when it gets there, but you know it does. So one of the key elements to manifestation as well is to let go and not control and allow the universe to do its work. And when the universe does its work, then they start putting people in your life. It's like synchronized events that actually are meant to be part of your time and your tune. There's no time and space in what you think. So when you're manifesting, you can't go, oh, in six months. No, when you're manifesting, you have to act as if it's already happened now. Mm -hmm. So for me, um, you have to have utmost trust that the thing that you're asking for within your heart, that you truly deserve it. 
And a lot of the time where people take so much longer or, or they feel like manifestation doesn't work for them when they do courses like, oh, trying to manifest, it's because deep within their inner soul, they don't truly believe they deserve it. Because if they truly believe that they deserve it, they wouldn't doubt it in the first place. And yes, we all have doubts, including me, but the things that essentially I've ever asked for, deep inside my soul, I've always known that I deserve. Mm. And so that's the element of um, getting rid of the conditioning and getting rid of your doubts and getting ready for your fears, because usually these doubts and fears that come your way usually come from a lifetime of conditioning that you've experienced from your parents, from people around you, from your work, from television, from social media. That has to go in order to um, really relinquish the control of what you're asking for and how it gets there and having pure and utter faith the universe is responding every time to your thoughts and the other thing that people need to understand is how the universe works it's like see it like a bubble right so every thought that you put out it collects it it collects your thoughts so if you think a negative thought as you're trying to think a positive thought then it bounces back like a rubber band so you're actually sabotaging the thought that you're asking for because you're still doubting the things that you're truly um asking for so that's coming from a um a low frequency instead of a high frequency a high frequency person will um say to themselves this is what i'm asking for I know I'm going to get it. And even if you doubt, you know, you're aware of your doubt, you stop for a minute, you think about it, you cut it. And the other thing I'll always say is never, ever, ever compare yourself to anybody else that's successful. Don't ever look at somebody else and go, oh, well, they've got that beautiful bag and they've got this and they've got that and look how much money. Because once you start doing that, then the universe will respond to you and put a block on what you're asking for. So mm -hmm. for me, if I see a friend and I've got some friends that are billionaires, I'm like, oh, yeah, that's amazing. Like, Yes, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm always clapping and championing people because for me, if I sat in that sense of um, jealousy, that's another blockage that I do not want. I can supersede and have the things that I want, but I can't be comparing myself, gossiping and bup, bup, bup about other people. Because when you do, again, that's a fear-based thought. And then it kind of um, sabotages the things you're asking for. And so you're not really letting go and having faith that what you're asking for, you truly deserve. And I think, I think what you said before was a lot of this is just ingrained in our behaviour and it's taken, you know, yes. what you're doing is trying to help people kind of have a new thought pattern, right? A new, yes. a new process. And also like, in a lot of what you're saying, as I heard you talking just then, I'm thinking, you know, it, it makes complete sense. When I think about my little girls, they're talking in this way, but a lot of the older, a lot of the Gen Xs and even Gen Xs, yep. they don't have this capacity to think like this. How are you getting through to them? Like, how do you take what I, you know in your heart and kind of educate them because you know it, it sounds woo woo to a lot of people well it does but it's, it comes down to connectability so when i give them comparisons of my own life and how i've created what i have today people then have this connectability mm. of oh fuck, all right if she's done it why can't i if she's <laughs> experienced the things that i've experienced then there must be some truth in this like people better get with it because manifestation is real man it mm. is real it is true it is Intuition is absolutely real. Even if you don't want to believe it, every single human being has experienced intuition in their life. It's your gut inner knowing, you have a gut feeling, a gut vibe. So even if you don't want to believe in, you know, what I'm saying about psychics or universe, okay, that's on you. But energy doesn't lie. What I'm coming from is the part of energy. And when I talk about psychic readings, I'm talking about energy. I'm not talking about a physical person that's dead going, ha, ha, hi, Jax. I'm talking about connecting into the energy of the person I give a reading to. And through that, I'm able to receive messages about people around them. And the other thing where I reckon I get through is really showing people that the experiences they've experienced, I've experienced to some degree, relationship failure, money failure, um, coming from um, a place where my family, very humble, um, having a toxic relationship, wanting a beautiful relationship with a man, but also knowing that I was very aware that back in my day, I was very quite judgmental. In fact, I was quite rude to people back when I was like 19 and 20. I thought I was the hottest shit ever. Sometimes I'd even say, why are you talking to me? Like, look at me. Like, how the fuck is that? I said that at 19, thinking it was so good looking. <laughs> like, that's so, but so you know what I mean? Like, I had a lot of ego back in my day as we all have ego. Somewhere along the lines, we've all had ego within our day. But um, I think the way I get through to people is showing my story that connects with their story might not be the exact same story, but it's similar mm, mm. and how I changed it. And what else? And you know what? The other thing that I say is that 
energy doesn't lie. If you felt I wasn't telling the truth or somebody wasn't telling the truth, your heart would go, ah, 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 something doesn't seem right, right? It's You would really feel that. Mm. And if it didn't connect with you on some level, then it'd be like, why am I judging what she's saying if it's not connecting? Do you mm. get what I'm saying? So mm. obviously it's triggering something within you that wants to believe, but there's another part of your mind that's saying don't because it doesn't want to remove you from the egotistical mindset that you have. So it's, it's essentially changing and shifting the conditioning of one's mindset. But the biggest, and I'll say it again, the biggest thing that I see is ability because when they take accountability, they have to change. Yeah. And I think what you just said then is some people will listen and some people are ready to listen and some people aren't. And I think, That's right. you know, one of the, uh, you know, we've talked about this with the readings is that that reading experience, as much as you love doing it, you you want to see it through a bit more, which is why you've been developing Transform You. Yeah. You talk yeah. us a little bit about that. Yeah. So Transform You, and I did talk about it a little bit before, but Transform You is a, um, 12 week course where I coach and mentor people through taking accountability, taking responsibility, but also showing people how to create their life of their dreams. And a lot of the time um, when people don't have somebody to help them through it, like, so basically I'm essentially going to be your teacher. I'm going to help you through this course and I'm going to show you ways to change your life to be a better version of yourself. I'm going to show you how to tap into your manifestation um, mindset. I'm going to show you how to create and attract the things in your life that you want, but it's also not going to be easy. And that's the other thing that I want to say. So you essentially get a psychic medium reading with me, but then you have a 12 week course you take with me where I will take you along the journey of um, showing you healthy habits to maintain throughout your life and to always go back to. Um, I also make you take accountability within your life for what's not working, um, but also try and shift you into living into purpose, finding your purpose, living it, feeling it, and becoming the best version of yourself. And with that, you'll also get a, a weekly call from me. Oh, imagine my beautiful face. Hey, girl. <laughs> hey, dude. What's happening? Um, where I come in and answer questions. So if something doesn't um, sink in, it's okay. Because, man, me at school, like a lot of things didn't sink in because I'd get bored. But with my course, you won't get bored. Um, <laughs> so I'll be there to show you how to um, navigate some of the questions if you have any. So I'm basically your, um, your online teacher. That's why I've created Transform You because it's it enables you to really take stock of how to change your life and stick with it because so many people still, a, a woman came up to me at the airport and says, I seen your new course, Transform You. And Ben was with me and she goes, that's what I need. And I said, well, then take the course. Mm -hmm. And she goes, oh, but I don't know if I really want to think about what's not working for me. <laughs> well, then you're not ready. You know what I mean? <laughs> but it's going, but it's a very positive, uplifting 12 week course. that's really going to change your life. It yeah. changed my life and it's going to change yours. So I'm oh. so excited about it, Mia. No, oh, I'm so excited about it too. And it's only a few weeks away. So the, the way that people can go and get a reading, how do they do that? So the way to get a reading, the only way to get a reading with me now is you have to take the 12 week course because I want you to change your life. I do not want people coming back for a psychic meeting reading every six months, one year, two years. No, I want you to take initiative. I want you to take control of your own life. So getting a psychic meeting reading with me will also be part of taking the course. So you change your life. And um, that's the only way now I do psychic meeting readings. And with that, it allows me to actually be able to help people on a larger scale rather than a smaller scale. And that's what this is really essentially about. And through even taking this course, it's also about giving back to one amazing charity that is so dear to my heart called the Creating um, Hope Foundation, the Maury Kelly Creating Hope Foundation. So um, it's not just about also helping yourself, but it's also being able to help other people through you taking the course. So it's it's a win-win for, for everybody. And I know that this course will change so many people's lives. I just know it in my heart. And if people feel a bit overwhelmed by the thought of a course, what's your message to them? Oh, look, there are two um, there are two courses, the collective and the inner circle. And so there's another the, the other um, course that you can take, the collective, you can do it at your own pace. So basically you can take that course, learn at your own time, relax your mind. You'll get there when you get there. Sometimes that's, you know, easy for people that are busy, 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 busy. So I've 
participate in the course of the inner circle, which includes a psychic medium reading with me, or the collective course that doesn't include a psychic medium reading with me. But that means that you've got a lot of time to take that course within your own time. Thank you so much. I know we've got to wrap up now. It's been such a good conversation and there's just so much more I want to talk about, but we have to wrap up. But in your final kind of closing words, what would you, what's any advice or to anyone aspiring to kind of take a leap and be a leader or do something new or change? What's your advice to them? My advice is listen to your intuition. It never, ever lies. And I guess once you just got slightly than me on your leg, I see you was talking. <laughs> you got to listen to your intuition. And Mia, even though I've got to wrap up, we'll have to do another one of these talks in a few weeks, okay? I'd love to. Thanks, Jackie. Love you, girl. Love you. Bye. 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 bye.